treatment of the bull. And again, this should be done well in advance of the start of the breeding season in case there are any problems. The two key areas you want to focus on are one, condition. You want your bull to be fit and not fat. You don't want them too fat, but you don't want them too thin. The second area is feet. The bull must have four good feet under him if he's going to jump up and down and mount the cows. If the feet are sore, he won't mount the cows and you'll run into a fertility issue. If there is any doubt after carrying out the visual inspection, you should contact your vet to have a veterinary examination carried out as soon as possible. First thing I would do is carry out a visual examination of the bull. First of all, a general look at his appearance, his condition and his coat. And then I'd start at the ground and work my way up. First of all, he needs four good feet. I suppose, Charlie, you mentioned the feet there. Maybe I suppose you make a comment on this guy's feet. Yes. His front feet, as you can see, are becoming a bit overgrown and overriding one another. So he would need pairing, but not now in the middle of the breeding season. He's not lame, so I would leave him until the autumn. Yeah. To so you, address that you would, you would put You would pair his feet in the autumn where I suppose you're not going to be using them for an hour, two, three or four months again and give them time to recover? Precisely. So yeah. making sure the, the rest of the apparatus are in order is, is important as well? Absolutely essential that he has a good pair of testicles should hang down at, on a warm day like this, should hang down well clear of the body and have a clearly defined neck. It's important to examine um, the rod, first of all, from any deviations off a straight line, you know, where it might suggest that at some stage he ruptured his penis. Also, the prepuce. You, know, you don't want a lead with the prepuce prolapse, do you know, where it's oh, visible. Yeah. Yeah. It's dried, gets injured, gets Sore. diseased. Yes, exactly. The back is also important the for when is the bull is mounted. Important, exactly. Bulls with any kinds of back injuries are unable to mount or experience pain. So it's important, all right. That and you would feel along the back here, Charlie, if you can feel any tenderness or... Precisely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I suppose, Charlie, we've done the visual assessment, we've, done, we've, we've looked at the veterinary side, but it, it's still not foolproof. It's, it's important to look at how the bull is performing out in the field. Libido is very important. So I think when, it, when you get a new bull, rather than just let him off out, you should introduce him to a cow that's on heat to yeah. see that he is able to perform yeah. his duties. Yeah, and I suppose even like, just because a bull worked last year, Charlie, it's no, uh, it's no guarantee that he's going to work again the following year? Absolutely none. I had one only the other day, was fertile last year. First thing I noticed about him this year is very small testicles. You'd almost imagine he was castrated. He's totally lost his libido, yeah. unable to get an erection, and totally uninterested. Yeah. Cows. In a bid to improve the quality of the weanlings that they are producing, many suckler farmers are now looking at going down the route of AI. However, it is important that they understand the concept of AI in order that they avoid the pitfalls. What do you feel are the pitfalls or what are the main pitfalls of AI? Well, the main pitfalls I could see in using AI, certainly to start off with, um, would be part-time farming. Um, Part-time farming has created a major obstacle towards the use of AI. That coupled together with heat detection, or inadequate heat detection, I should say, the lack of heat detection, is uh, another major factor. Um, help on the, on, the, on the rural farm at the moment is, is also a, a, a big obstacle. Mm -hmm. What tips can you give them for, over, for overcoming them pitfalls? And you, mentioned, you specifically mentioned heat detection there. Well, certainly, uh, you know, every, every problem has a solution and the pitfalls facing AI definitely have solutions. Um, there's many heat detections out there now, heat detection aids, both new and old. You have the uh, Estrus Alert badge, which goes on, on the tail of the cow. It yeah. works kind of like a scratch card. You're probably familiar with them, Justin. Yeah. Um, tail paint is also very successful. has been used for many years in both suckler and dairy herds. Uh, also, you have a chin ball on a vasectomized bull, which is a very, very successful method mm -hmm. of heat detection also. But basically, to get to the nuts and bolts of it, even running a strong bull calf with cows for the season is, is, uh, is, is a successful way of picking up cows. To use AI successfully from the farmer's point of view, um, he has to cooperate fully with the inseminator. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is get their calls in on time. Never ever, I would never advise a farmer to leave a single cow in, identify the animal clearly, that's for AI, but also leave a companion cow with her there. Yeah. Um, cows today have become a little harder to handle than they were in the past. Have a good crush, have good facilities for the inseminator when he arrives, because I'd say 90% of the inseminations are done by the inseminator alone. Right, we're going to AI this cow now. She's been put in position and restrained properly for AI. So we just 
Remove the tail to the right hand side, hold the tail off, clean the vulva with a paper towel to remove any dirt or contaminants that may be on it. And inset, lubricate over the rectum and slowly with the hand in a cone shape, putting the eye gun through. We now put the eye gun in till we're through the cervix and right up to the body of the uterus where we are now and slowly press the plunger on the AI gun and deposit the semen in the body of the uterus. Release the animal from her constraint. Whether you decide to go down the route of AI or use the pedigree stock bull, it's important that you utilize top genetics. The U Euro star ratings are available to identify the strengths and weaknesses of various bulls. Basically, the bulls are, are rated on, for various traits on a star rating of 1 to 5. 5 stars being excellent, 1 star being poor. As we can see here, this bull here has, is excellent on calving traits. He's an easy calving Charlie bull. Wean and export, he is 4, so he's still very good, but not excellent. And beef carcass, he is, very, he is excellent. If you look at docility, he's not the kind of guy that you'd, you'd get in out of the field very handy. He's poor on docility. Overall, all these traits are then encompassed in what's classified as the overall suckler beef value. And this bull here, a very good quality bull, has a five star value for overall suckler beef value. Not only do the Eurostar ratings rank the bulls within breed, but they also rank them across all breeds. And that, why that is important, as you can see here, this bull here is a five star within the Charlie breed. But if we go across here to the right, he's, when we compare him to Hereford and Angus and other easier calving breeds, he's actually only a three star. So, beefing up breeding, what's it all about? Well basically it all starts with having the right type of suckler cow and the right type of suckler cow will depend on which market you're producing. Okay, yes, if you're looking at that live export market, three euro a kilo, well then perhaps you will bull the likes of the blue heifer we've seen earlier. But what I would warn you is, know your constraints. Secondly, producing top quality. And firstly, top quality isn't all about well muscled weanlings, heavy continental cattle. It's, it's a top quality animal is an animal that will attract a premium price in whichever market you sell it. That can either be the live export market, the domestic market, or niche markets such as Hereford and Angus. <laughs>